So we've got a number of things that are going to happen in this afternoon. Number one, you're about to hear from another one of our legendary power leaders that just like many of you, this gentleman has a vision, he has a passion for what he's doing. Um, but how many of you have ever heard of how important it is to have a why, a reason why you're doing something, right? So I was back there talking to the gentleman you're about to meet, Mr. J.C. Rangel, and I asked J.C., yeah, right? J.C. is always one of our favorite speakers here. He just drops knowledge bombs and is an incredible, incredible human. And I asked him, I said, so what motivated you? Why did you switch from the career you're in to solar, right? Didn't know anything about this industry. And he looks at me and he goes, he goes, I was raised, he goes, I was raised by a single mom with three boys. And I made a commitment that I was going to retire my mom by the time I was 30. Yeah. How cool is that, right? Yeah. And, you know, when I, when I think about the amount of energy that moms give to raising a family, right? They're not just typically raising the children and running a household, right? They're managing our lives in, in many cases. And now many of them are running, you know, global businesses, it's incredible the evolution that happens, but the amount of energy that that takes and commitment is unheard of. And I remember the first time, you know, I think my life changed when I watched Michelle, my wife, deliver my son. And I understood, you know, after 12 hours of pushing that there's nothing that is impossible. There's no limit to what this woman is capable of. And so for every one of the moms out there that has given birth and given life and given energy, let's give them a huge hand. Yeah. And, and we're, we're in a really unique time because we're really going from a male-dominant society to a female-balanced society, and we need that, right? Yeah. And it's really important. And what's cool about that is you see women owning their power in a way they haven't done in the, in the recent past. You see men actually understanding that it's not just about the head and the drive, but it's about the heart, right? And that's the heart is 60 times more powerful than the mind from a frequency standpoint. So when you have a clear vision and you have the mental capacity, but you activate the heart, anything is possible, and so this next person that I'm going to bring up, J.C. Rangel, is that guy. He's incredibly intelligent. He is a world-class martial artist. He's a dad. He's an incredible husband. And he's driven by his why. So after we bring up J.C. Rangel, and we're going to do it in power style, then we're going to lead into enterprise. How many of you would like to have more enterprises on your team? Say aye. Awesome. Awesome. So Jonathan Budd's going to come back to the stage. We're going to talk about enterprise. We're going to have a couple of enterprise talks, and uh, we're going to just move right into the rest of the day. So power people, do me a favor. Let's all stand on our feet. Let's welcome up the man, the myth, the legend, J.C. Rangel. Light it up, light it up, light it up. Thank you. Woo! Let's get into it. Let's get into it. Everybody say, let's go. Let's go. How many people are excited? Say, aye. aye. That's right. We're going to bring the heat. No snowflakes in this room because we're bringing the heat. Who's ready? Let's get started. First and foremost, Ms., uh, Mr. Bunch, thank you so much. I look up to him tremendously like, like all of us here. Uh, Mr. Bud, everybody, my incredible team, too many of you guys to name, Okay. But you guys, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't be up here. The, the recognition that the leaders get is because of the team. It's because of them, but it's also because of their team. Because we, none of us would be up here if it wasn't for our incredible team. So Anthony Bonilla, one of the best people in the world. Zachary Bach, Jordan Shaw, Jessica Patty. I mean, forgive me because I can't get everybody. My brother Lewis, right, Kevin, all of you guys. I love you guys. I can't mention everybody. So anyways. I've only got a couple of minutes, so we're going to get this thing going. As he mentioned, one of my whys, my number one why was retire my mom. I was raised in an environment where one single mom could raise three, four, five kids, but three, four, five kids, when they got older, couldn't retire one single mom. Can anybody relate? Yeah. 
And I said, hey, listen, I'm an illegal immigrant from Mexico at the time. I don't have a social security number at 18 years old. I can't get a driver's license. I can't get a job legally. But I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to retire my mom. At the age of 18, I wrote down, I'm so happy and grateful now that I've retired my mom. Okay. And remember, my friends got jobs. They got licenses. Right. Little simple little things like that that most people take for granted I wasn't able to get. But it, because of entrepreneurship, because of, of hanging around with the right people and because of personal development, I was able by the age of 28 or 29, go up to my mom. She used to work for a rich lady in Beverly Hills at the time, cleaning her house. I said, hey, mom, you don't have to go tomorrow to work tomorrow. As a matter of fact, you don't have to go to work anymore. Welcome to the rest of your life. Thank you. <laughs> so with that being said, I'm going to talk about the mentality of a top mentor. I don't know if some of you guys may or may not know, I was a top mentor 2021, top mentor 2022. I said this year, I'm not going to close a lot of sales. I'm going to focus on developing leaders and building a team and building a passive income. My focus isn't selling. And if it was selling, I'd have a lot more sales than, than 45 sales that I've got thus far this year. Because that's not my focus. My focus is team building. So we're going to get into some of these things. So the first question that you should ask yourself is, would you follow you? If you wouldn't follow you, why would anybody else? When I talk to somebody, I know that I'm that coach that if you're coachable and you plug into the system and you do your job, guess what? We're going to get you to where you want to get to, right? We're going to go out there and build this business, right? So what do you follow you? I want people to follow me because as we're talking, we got two handsome boys over there and a beautiful woman, my wife and my two sons with shades on. You see them over there? Say hello, everybody. Alexander's excited. That is a great Maximus and Alexander the Great called them into existence before they were born. I said, my son, I'm going to be my son's hero, not LeBron James. Not some movie star, not some YouTuber. I'm going to be my son's hero. But guess what? I got to pay the price in business. So what do you follow you? What do you work with you? And what do you buy from you? How many people in this room can honestly answer that question? Honestly and say yes to all three by a show of hands. Great. And if you can, I appreciate your honesty, but we've got to work on those things, right? So, oops, let's go back. You don't have to, you get to, as a leader, you don't have to deal with rejection. You get to deal with rejection. How many of you guys have, have experienced some rejection in this business or in life? Yes. Guess what? Instead of throwing, what I used to do is I used to throw a pity party. Oh, man, it sucks that this client rejected me. It sucked that this person rejected me. He said he was going to join the business. He didn't join the business. I don't have to. I get to because the more I'm building, the more rejection I'm going to get. The thing is that a champion has failed significantly more times than a novice has even tried. So rejection is a part of the game. You don't have to. You get to deal with change orders. How many of you guys got some stressful change orders? Right? Yes. You get to deal with them. You get to deal with cancellations. You get to deal with some project managers that maybe take a little bit longer than, they, than you think they should. Can we agree? Yes. And you get to prospect. Every single day I know I got to call these people and I got to make these many phone calls and I got to talk to new people. I've got right now between 35 and 45 frontline tier threes. Frontline. Over 100 tier threes in the organization. I wish they recognized that in the recognitions. You know, maybe, maybe next time. Recognize how many tier threes in those six levels. Because I know that the more tier threes that are closing business, right, we're going to make some money. Can we agree? So let's get it going. So we get to prospect, okay. Top mentors are excited about doing what has to get done. Okay. Here's what we do. We remove the emotion and we proceed to get the job done. So, yes, things are stressful. When I got started in 2020, I started door knocking in 2020 with power with no experience. The only thing I knew about solar is that it had solar panels on the roof. That's it. I didn't know what an inverter was. I didn't know what a kilowatt was, what a kilowatt hour was. But I started late March 2020. What happened March 16th or March 20th around the world? The outbreak, the pandemic. You can't visit people. And I'm door knocking two weeks later. And I don't know anything about solar. So I tell my people, don't give me an excuse because all excuses are equal. If other people with worse circumstances than you can win, you can win. But are you willing to get uncomfortable and go out there and do what has to get done? All of the how-tos are done. 
The how-tos isn't what it takes to win. The mindset is the number one thing that it takes to win. Developing a bulletproof mindset. All the how-tos and the, and, and the what to say, the scripts, is all available for you for free. The mindset that it takes of a top performer is what matters. So remove the emotion and focus on one brick at a time. Every day is a brick. I heard the story of Will Smith one day, one day saying the story of his death was showing him and his brother how to build a wall. He says, we're going to lay one brick and you lay that one brick as perfectly as possible. Then you get the next brick and you lay it next to it as perfectly as possible, that one brick at a time. You don't focus on the whole wall, you focus on that one brick. That one brick is that one day. If today I have a goal to call 30 realtors and to go door knock, for example, whatever type of prospecting you do, and knock on 100 doors and return X amount of emails and finish my to-do list, as long as I know this is what my successful day looks like, I laid that one brick at a time good. Here's what will happen. Back in March when I got started 2020, there was no sales in my organization. Fast forward now, there's about 2,000 installations in my organization. Three and a half years. It's not too shabby, yeah? Just shy of 2,000 installations, I didn't do 2,000 installations. I did 118 deals last year, though, right? By the way, I work an average of 26 hours per week. You can ask my team. The, what, what we've done for the last two years has been with 26 hours per week. I take, I work four days. I take my, I take my son to school in the morning, and I take him to jujitsu at 445. That's what I do. Now, I'll take some appointments after that, but an average of 26 hours per week. So, Focus on one brick at a time, but you have to identify, what does that one brick look like? Most people say, oh, focus on one brick at a time, great, okay. And if you ask them, what does that one brick look like? What does that one perfect day look like for you? How many phone calls should you make? How many presentations should you do? They don't know. And if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. So let's keep it going. Here's a question. Think about this. Look at the word knowledge. Look at the word hard work. If, one equals, if A equals 1 and Z equals 26, the word knowledge would equal 96. Knowledge is important. Hard work would equal 98. But is this a coincidence or not? Attitude equals 100. Coincidence? Not in my opinion. Your attitude determines your altitude. And write this down for your notes. There's only two things that we can control. Our attitudes and our actions. I learned this when I was a teenager fighting for a world title. I broke, my, I broke my ankle in Canada fighting for a world title. Next year I come back training halfway through the year. The, the, the world title fight is in December. I break my nose and I tell my mom, 16 years old, I say to my mom, I get home with a broken nose. She says, oh my God, as you can imagine, freaks out. We got to take you to the hospital. I say, yes, mom. We'll go. This is a Thursday night. So we'll go to the hospital on Monday. I got to be in San Antonio, Texas this weekend to fight at a tournament. I literally went to that tournament and fought with a broken nose, literally sideways. I'm not exaggerating. I learned at a, at a young age, your attitude determines your altitude. Two things we can control, our attitudes and our actions. If we have a great attitude, a bulletproof mindset attitude, and we take the necessary steps accordingly, consistently, and persistently over what? Exactly. Over a long period of time, some people have been to, to the trainings, right? Persistently and consistently over an extended period of time or a long period of time, you will see those results. <coughs> so the slide edge. Anybody here read the book, The Slide Edge? Phenomenal book. The slide edge is always working for you. These are simple disciplines repeated over and over that seem to make no difference in the act of doing them, but make a tremendous difference over the long term, Right? It's, here's the deal. Some people are going to say, I'm going to take notes today. Some people are going to say, I'm going to remember this stuff. When they leave this convention, can you see a difference? Not yet. But what if they go out there and they decide to apply them? They say, I'm going to do my to-do list. I'm going to time block like Zachary Bach talks about. I'm going to lay one brick at a time. I'm going to identify what that one brick at a time looks like. A week later, you can't tell the difference. But here's what happens. One person says, I'm going to do it. The other person says, I'll do it tomorrow. The person that does it says, I'm going to be uncomfortable because it's uncomfortable to do something new, right? Like working out. Some people say, I don't have time to work out. Wake up an hour earlier. 
go walk for 30 minutes. It isn't that hard. It's actually easy to do. Here's a problem. It is easier not to do. It's easier not to do. It's not that hard, right? So what happens is that person A that does a daily discipline, the person B that does a daily errors in judgment, person B is at a point where he is comfortable. It's more comfortable to sleep in. It's more comfortable to not do the things. Can we agree? Yes. Your comfort zone is your broke zone, by the way. Your comfort zone is your broke zone. So here's what happens. Guy A is uncomfortable. Guy B is comfortable. But five years from now, when guy A has a thriving business, has 250 mentors on his team and 2,000 people in his organization, and he's making more in passive income than, than, than he used to make on, on, on actively selling, he's very comfortable. Can we agree? This other guy's still trying to figure out how to pay the bills. This other guy still has too much month at the end of the money. Does that make sense? Some of y'all get that on the way home. <laughs> All right. Here we go. Let's finish, let's finish this off. The slight edge is always working for you. These are the simple disciplines repeated over an extended period of time. And remember this. This is one of the key things I want you to remember. Time is either going to promote you or expose you. Are you going to come back next year with the same amount of people, with the same amount of income? Or are you going to come back next year and get recognized on stage? Because you paid the price. See, champions, everybody say champions. Champions, champions are not made in the ring. They're just recognized there. Champions are made in the dark of the night when, no, when everybody is still asleep, they get up and they go run. Champions are made when they're knocking on doors, when they're paying attention, when they're making phone calls, when they're getting rejection and they have a great attitude no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the last slide. Some of you guys don't understand this. I know. It's okay. Pasos cortos, vista larga. There's a quote by Pitbull. It means short steps, long vision. That one brick at a time. I'm going to focus on short steps. If I have perfect days, I identify with my mentor. What is my perfect day? What is my DMO? Help me come up with a daily method of operation. I'm going to follow it. You tell me to jump, I'm not even going to ask how high I'm going to jump. I'm going to be the most coachable person that you've ever seen. I'm going to do it long enough till I see the results. So short steps, long vision. And if I had a mic right now, I'd drop it. Let's go.